Hi guys, this is Seven Spirits from Realms Beyond. I'm going to take you through a tour of my latest uh, end of turn save from PBM 39. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a Civilization 4 game I'm playing. Um, and you can find the link to that in the video description. If you do know what it is, and it's because you're playing in the game, uh, then I guess you shouldn't spoil yourself, and now would be the right time to close the video. Let's get started. So the first thing to note here is that I'm in a golden age. You can see I've got two more turns left of golden age, and then everything will be back to normal until the Taj finishes that same turn. It says it's finishing in three turns. It's going to finish in three turns, even though on the third turn I won't have as much production anymore because of the golden age being over. Now, I intentionally timed it to finish the turn the turn after the Golden Age ends, and not the same turn uh, that is the last turn of the Golden Age, uh, because of a strange feature of the Taj Mahal, which is you get a little bit of extra Golden Age on the turn that you build it, and then the full six turns of Golden Age after that, or in my case, because I have the Mausoleum of Mausolus, the full nine turns. So I'm, I'm getting a little bit of extra Golden Age by having one turn where I'm officially not in a golden age, but I'll still get some extra hammers and great person points from the Taj Mahal, because as soon as I finish building the Taj, all my tile yields and great person point yields will go up, and I'm building it in my capital. So every other city is going to get those boosted yields. It's not going to apply to commerce, because commerce is done all at once at, at the beginning. Uh, so so that you finish researching your tax and gathering gold before doing any kind of production or great person point production or growth. So anyway, finishing the Taj the first turn of not having a golden age anymore. Uh, that out of the way, uh, this is my capital. Uh, it's producing a lot of commerce. It's because I'm in bureaucracy. I have an academy, a library built a monastery. As soon as the Taj finishes, I'm going to build another monastery because I just founded Taoism a couple turns ago. Um, so yeah, things look pretty sweet and it's producing a large number of beakers. Here's my empire. The capital is pretty much at the center. I'm gonna, just going to go through all the cities so that you can see. So my second city that I founded is Trading Post. Trading Post was immediately connected by road. It uh, shared the uh, rice and the ivory right away, which was great, as well as this town, which came pre-placed, by the way. Um, so it was a really good second city. Also found it on the Plains Hill, and because I'm creative, it. Uh, Border pot claimed the corn and the cows. So just a very nice second city. And uh, it's just sort of been an all around city. It's been producing workers and settlers for a long time, and then recently I've been growing it. Um, I built some cottages for it, as, as you can see, because it's got a nice river going through it. And uh, I've tricked it out with uh, a library to boost that, a courthouse, because I'm building those everywhere, because I'm organized. And it's also built some wonders. It's built the Mausoleum of Mausolos using mostly chops. Uh, it built the Shwedagon Paya completely using these mines that you see right here and the ivory. And uh, just uh, two turns ago, it built the Great Wall, which, uh, which is really cheap. So who cares how I built it? City number three, which claimed horses and allowed me to build some chariots, and it's actually being specialized as a military pump. I'm just going to, I've, I've built a forge here, i built a barracks, uh, I'm really looking forward to when I can build the heroic epic, and I only need to earn, I think, six more experience before I'll get my first great general, I'll immediately attach it to a unit, and then I'll have a level four unit. Uh, is that right? Level four? guess so, for the heroic epic. And uh, this city's al already producing a lot of hammers, and right now 
it's going to be one turning longbows for several turns. But once I got the heroic epic in here, it can one turn cursiers. So that'll be uh, really fantastic if I can get that going. This is a crap city. I found it at next kind of as a stepping stone, um, both for this city over here to the west and for this city over here to the north. And also to build a galley to settle this island over here. So just a stepping stone, it, it, it claimed this cow and this deer here, both of which are pretty nice uh, for two tiles. Um, but I haven't bothered building anything here, it just has a granary and uh, it's just been building workers, a couple military units, a couple boats, some extra work boats for island cities, all these kind of odd jobs and it's been neglected and in the next few turns I'm going to get it a religion, uh, I'm going to spread Confucianism here, and then I'll, I'll build it a forge and it can be a permanent boat producer or something like that. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to bother building any infrastructure here until I have the organized religion bonus. Um, so like I said, this city over here was kind of a stepping stone for this one. And this one was founded because it has a ton of food. And uh, I thought it would make a great national epic city. And you can see that's exactly what it's doing. I'm getting lots of great person points every turn. And uh, this is this is the only reason I'm running cast system right now is so that I can run all of these scientists. And let me actually tell you about my civic situation really quick. So why am I not in hereditary rule? Uh, I'm in a golden age. I can switch whenever I want. It's not because I'm waiting for some other civic to unlock. Actually, the reason is I want to be able to switch back to slavery at a moment's notice because the only drawback of being in caste system in a golden age is I can't emergency slave units. I, I, I don't want to be slaving normally because a uh, golden age population is very valuable. It's, it's not typically going to be worth it to sacrifice that for a temporary boost in hammers. But if someone attacks me, I'm going to want to be able to switch into slavery and quickly whip out a defender or two. Um, and the only reason I'm not sw swapping into hereditary rule right now, because it's just a strict positive, is, well, I guess I don't need it, to be honest. But mainly because I want to preserve the option to switch into slavery whenever I need to. Um, at the end of my two golden ages, I'm planning to switch into nationhood and theocracy and mercantilism and slavery and hereditary rule. And uh, at that point, I'm just going to go to town on the military. I'm going to whip out a bunch of cuirassiers and draft a bunch of uh, muskets, I guess, and hopefully later some rifles. Actually, it's possible that I'll want to stick in bureaucracy a bit longer, but I think I'm going to be switching to nationhood because uh, you got to have some fighting, and uh, nationhood is really good for that. Drafting is very powerful. So and interlude about civics. I'm in a caste system only for this one city, just so that I can pop out some great scientists. And the only reason I want to pop out some great scientists is, well, I've got one great scientist right now, and he's going to bold education. You can see I'm researching paper this turn. I'm going to research education next turn with the help of a bulb. Turn after that, I'm going to research compass, probably. And the reason I research compass is because with the combination of texts I have researched, which includes alphabet, and does not include machinery, if I research compass, I will be able to use a scientist to bold liberalism, um, which will make sure that I win that race, and it'll just save me some time on the way to getting cursiers going. So plan is to research education, compass, liberalism, grab military tradition with the free tech from liberalism, and uh, then I only have two more techs before I can build cursiers. I need gunpowder and horseback riding. And I may actually get horseback riding be before compass and liberalism. We'll, we'll see if anyone else seems to be going for liberalism. I'm sure no one can catch me, but uh, that, that doesn't remove my right to be paranoid. 
So that's why we're producing other scientists to bulb liberalism. Okay. Um, here is a very beautiful city. When I founded it, it Im immediately had plus five food surplus. And the turn after that, it had plus eight food sur surplus because this, this, this wheat here was, actually, was accidentally made into, into, into a plains, floodplains, wheat tile. So basically the floodplains was extra and floodplains means plus three food because it normally appears on deserts. Um, so I got three extra food, kind of a kind of a nice bonus that I didn't need, but uh, I, I unfortunately did not realize that I wasn't supposed to get a floodplains wheat until I'd already planned my whole settling plan around it by putting this city here and uh, preparing some roading to go settle up here, um, or I would have, you know, said, "Hey, maybe we we should get this bug in the map fixed." But anyway, it it it, it hasn't had too big of an impact, um, and uh, yeah, I think it's not a big deal in general. So this city built the Great Lighthouse mostly from chops. Um, the plus three food certainly didn't help. That was just growing onto coasts. Um, so Great Lighthouse built mostly for, from chops, and the Great Lighthouse has been, well, great. Um, it immediately was, was worth about plus 18 bucks a turn, I think, and it's been worth even more since I founded my four island cities. I only had one island city at the time, which means that none of the routes from the Great Lighthouse were worth two. They were all just worth one. Um, except the ones on the one island city, of course, which I had already founded. Um, so very strong bonus, and it immediately rewarded me for settling two more cities. Um, and it's been making cities be approximately break even ever since. Uh, the only cities I have that are not coastal are the first three cities, actually. My capital, trading post, and menagerie. Those are the only three non-coastal cities I have, and I did change my settling plan a little bit when it looked like I was going to be getting the Great Lighthouse, so that all the rest of them would be coastal. But uh, that's just how this map is, really. Most of the cities are going to be coastal, just not the early ones. And that's, I think, why the Great Lighthouse fell so late, is be because uh, you don't want your early cities to be coastal. You kind of want your later ones to be coastal. So now we come to Coppersmith, and Coppersmith is not a very good city, but uh, it does have some good food tiles, and it's founded on copper, uh, which is like founding on a plains hill because it's a desert copper hill, which has two hammers base yield. The reason I founded it here, um, well, a couple of reasons. Um, I wanted to establish a good border city versus dazed, and uh, this city is able to produce boats um, that that will uh, go in and invade uh, dazed lands over here. Um, it's very easily defensible by water because I can just put some boats on, for example, this tile here, and uh, it's completely blocked off. Additionally. Um, I will later be able to build a fort on this tile and uh, make a canal so my navy will be able to travel from the sea down here to this sea and vice versa. And that's going to be very handy because I, 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 uh, I'm going to have several cities on this sea. I'm going to build at least one more here. So I'm going to have three cities on this body of water. Dazed has zero, so I have a big advantage, and I can export some boats to up here, where he has the big advantage. He has got um, four cities that I can see that are coastally on this body of water, and I only have one. So that's Coppersmith. Um, uh, here's my Moai city, and uh, obviously it looks very nice in a golden age. Um, I just built the Parthenon here. Uh, it was kind of on a whim, uh, and the reason actually was that I just finished chopping this this forest here, and uh, 
I had also just finished a build, so I had some overflow, and the result was that I had so many hammers per turn that just about anything, I would have lost hammers, um, because there's a cap to how much you can overflow, which is typically the price of the item you're just building, and I had more than twice as many hammers as the cost of pretty much anything, so I basically had um, two or three options. One, I could build a settler, and I, w I wouldn't lose anything there, but I, I've i actually just built three settlers, and I didn't really feel like I needed another one. And an another option was to start on a wonder. Um, and Parthenon was the best wonder, I think, uh, that is still not built, um, the most useful to me. And uh, right now, Right now, it is useful in that, as you can see here, it's boosting all the great person points, and it's causing me to get some more great scientists while I'm in this double golden age. Um, in the future, I could also see it, uh, I could see myself having a third golden age where I run pacifism and uh, pump out some great people in several different cities, and there it's really going to shine because that 50% bonus is going to apply in every city. And actually, I should mention that uh, that 50% bonus is not going to waste here either. Um, this is th this is just from Wonders, but uh, I'm getting six base great person points, and that's being increased all the way up to 15 by the Golden Age and the Parthenon. So eventually I'm going to get a great person from here, certainly not in 11 turns like it says, um, but much, much later, and probably this is just a great person I'm going to use for another golden age. Once it finished the Parthenon, now I can get back to uh, building some things that I need, and uh, I would I would really like a library here, but I also really want some triremes, because Scooter is kind of scary. Not scary in the has a lot of power sense, but scary in the uh, he's the Vikings, his boats move three tiles, he has the majority of cities on the bodies of water that we share, and uh, he just researched machinery, which means since he already had civil service that he can build berserkers. And berserkers are crushing pretty much everything I have in my cities right now, this is why I just researched feudalism, so I can build some longbows, which will defend well against the berserkers. But for the moment, I don't have that yet, and further, I I just don't want to be messed with at all. Um, like, if he gets a naval advantage, he can come and blockade me, he can negate the use of this with delightful crab, and this... I don't think he can get the lake, actually. You, you, you can't blockade across different bodies of water. But, uh... Blockades would, would, would be annoying. Um, just being able to pillage up my seafood would, would be annoying. Um, he may at some point, for example, if he builds a fort here um, and here, he'll be able to get boats up into this area. And so if I let him get a big naval advantage here, he can even press it like I was talking about doing with Dazed and get into my area over here where I'm running basically zero defenders. I have a single warrior guarding these three island cities and he's just there as military police. Uh, the other ones are small enough that they don't need anything yet. So I really need to retain naval control of this sea and I would also like to get some slightly better naval, naval control of this sea over here because right now, um, I don't have good good vision here, and Dazed, uh, sorry, Scooter, could come out of the fog here. His, his, his boats move three tiles. He could move one, two, three, dump some guys there, next turn attack here. That, that kind of sucks. Kind of sucks a lot. Um, I'd, I'd, I don't want to leave myself open to being sneak attacked like that, which means I, I want to get some vision of these tiles so that Scooter can't use boats to uh, really s surprise attack me. And the other thing is, it would really be nice to get an advantage here so that I can blockade Scooter, because Scooter is both financial and has the Colossus, and he's probably going to start a Golden Age soon, which means that all of these water tiles are going to be two food and five commerce, which is just insane, and it would be so, so powerful to be able to blockade those, pillage the seafood that's here and here. And, uh, 
yeah, just have control of this area so I don't have to worry about his stupid fast boats. By the way, kind of funny here, you can see this speck of light maybe. That's the torch of the Colossus. So uh, even though I can't actually see the Colossus, I can tell that he built it in this city be because there's <laughs> the torch here in the fog. Uh, so another point is that it would be pretty sweet if I could raise this city of biochemistry because then he won't have the Colossus anymore, and that's pretty much giving me my biggest competition right now. Uh, Scooter Financial Colossus. Uh, his tech rate is, I think, quite a bit higher than everyone else's. Back to here. Like I said, I'd really like to build a, a library here, and perhaps I should have built it this turn already, but, oh no, actually I, th I think I had too much overflow to build a library correctly. So I'm building a trireme first, and then uh, once the overflow gets down to manageable... Is it, is it even going down? I don't even know if it's going down. At some point, I'm going to build a library here, I, I, I promise. And because uh, it, it does have a lot of commerce, you don't usually think of Moai cities as being commerce, but they, they, they do a mix of hammers and commerce, and so uh, the library is appropriate. But right now I'm building a trireme, and as you can see right now we have a standoff. He's got one trireme, I've got one trireme. But at the end of the turn I'm going to have another one, and I think he's going to have to fall back, because he doesn't want me to be able to attack, wound him, and then finish him off with the other one. Of course there is the possibility that he has another boat over here, and so that if I do that, um, he's going to be, ab be able to uh, retaliate in turn. There are two problems with, with that idea, though, if he thinks that. And uh, one of them is that I can just build another trireme on my next turn and then retaliate back. But the main problem is that I can attack with this fresh boat first. It can move two tiles, bam, suicide. Then I can attack with this one and then fall back again, and I won't be in range of his retaliatory boat. So he's probably not going to make that mistake, but... Um, something worth thinking about. Anyway, so I, I expect him to fall back. Over here, I've also just moved forward with my boats, because um, I just built a boat here in the highway, and uh, now I have two triremes here, and I've got one over here which has been sitting on this crab, preventing it from being pillaged. Now, Scooter has not shown any signs of aggression, and it would be really unfair to characterize this as, like, I need to defend against him because he's being a jerk and he's like being all kinds of annoying at me. No, he's shown all signs of peace. However, uh, I'm really far ahead and uh, at this point I think I really need to be treating this as a very competitive game um, and my biggest competition, like I said, is Scooter. And uh, even though it's nice for us to be chummy, well, um, I think it's strategically better for me to not be chummy anymore. So, sorry, Scooter. Um, anyway, if he does not retreat, um, three triremes should be able to take on a trireme in a galley. Uh, of course, he could have plenty of backup over here in the fog. There's lots of stuff I can't see, and he's got a giant city here that could probably whip out a trireme, or maybe even finish one off this turn, or who knows. So, there are lots of options here for him. Uh, but the main thing that I'm actually wanting to do here is two things. One, if I just get one tile farther north, I can start blockading him, because I'm in his culture. I won't hit this seafood over here, but I will hit all of these other tiles, and I will hit the seafood that's in the fog right here. Um, this one, the fish. The other thing is, um, I'm about to build a fort here and open up a canal between this water area that I control very well and this area that is more scooters land, or sea, I guess. Um, so, as you can see, I only have one turn left to finish off that fort. I'm going to do that next turn. I have a galley here. The galley contains a spy, and I'm going to drop the spy off here so that even if I lose control of this water, I will have vision of these tiles over here. Now ideally I would like to get the spy on onto the mainland, um, like over here by biochemistry, perhaps a bit north, 
but uh, that would take much longer. So for now, I'm just going to drop it off on the island. And uh, in the near future, I'll be getting a spy over to his mainland as well. Possibly I will pick that spy back up again and move it. Um, so the other reason I moved out here is to prepare for next turn. I would ideally like him to retreat so that my galley's not even in range of his boats after it moves through the fort to here and then drops off the spy. Where was I in the city order? I think I was I think I was still here. Let's move on. Um so this city uh obviously became very nice with calendar. It provides a gold, a dye, and it has a nice food tile in the, in the banana. And it's also part of the canal I just mentioned, so all around fantastic city. And right now it's building a longbowman. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to finish the longbowman. I think I would rather finish the forge first, which I've been working on. But the reason I started the longbowman, and I've done this in a few of my border cities, is just in case someone decides to come after me right now. I know, like, who would want to attack the person who's winning? That wouldn't make any sense. But, uh, you know, who knows? People can be crazy. They can uh, have delusions of wanting to win the game. Weird stuff like that. So I figure I'll start some longbows in my border cities, and if anyone starts to make any moves, I can switch into slavery and finish them. Same reason I'm starting a longbow here, even though it will take 11 turns. After putting three hammers into this longbow, I think I'm just going to finish the archer first. Um, the archer, it's a warm body, which is nice to have in this very, very, very important city, which is also coastal, next to Scooter, who has the three-move galleys. Um, nice to have a warm body, and also it can be upgraded to a longbow uh, for just 71 gold, which would frickin' suck. but. Uh, well, if it's an emergency, it's totally worth it because this is a really good city with a national epic, 10 population, a bunch of improved food resources, forum giving 25% GPP, that's an expensive building, lighthouse giving 25% beakers from all these scientists, and both of those plus the courthouse enabling it to run specialists even when I'm not in caste system. So this would be a lot of infrastructure to lose and I really would not like to do that. So building longbows in border cities, moving on. Um, I'm gonna start a longbow here next turn, promise, but uh, it was just too good to pass up this finishing the courthouse exactly thing. Uh, if, 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 if you can like finish a building exactly. It's just very satisfying. Um, more to the point, this city is much less important. It's claiming furs, which is worth two happy in my capital and one happy everywhere else um, that doesn't have a forum. Um, and it's, it's claiming stone, which I've pretty much used for what I need it for. I used it to build the Moai statues. And I used it to build the Great Wall too, but that wasn't important. But point being that this is no longer a very important city. It's a border city. It's meant to be a buffer, and it does claim a couple resources, but they're not critical. Uh, hence why I'm only defending it with an archer and a spearman right now. Um, it's just not the end of the world if it goes down, and I don't expect anyone to put a giant effort into attacking it, because it's just a stupid size 6 border city. I am defending it with two triremes, though, that's worth mentioning. So it, it's, it's, it's not like Archer and Spearman is the only thing uh, standing between this city and Oblivion. And also there's a chariot over here playing zone defense. He can move 2, 3, 4 over to Scrying Pool, or also to Highway. So. Um, I'm not totally throwing it to the wind. Next turn I'll start a longbow. Moving on. This city also, uh, I, I, I want to start a longbow here, but it was just one turn away from finishing the library, and I, uh, I, I, I didn't want to not finish the library yet. So uh, there you are. This is a fantastic city. It's got so many riverside grassland tiles, both hills and flatlands, that uh, 
it's just fantastic. And I even decided to farm one of them because it's got so many good tiles to grow on to. Um, in two turns, I believe, it will also have this wine improved because I just got monarchy. And uh, there's even two tiles over here that haven't been de-jungled that are both riverside grasslands too. So as soon as I have some spare worker turns, I'm going to do that. And uh, yeah, just uh, the lakes with the lighthouse and the crab and this nice horse tile in a golden age. Really, really good city and pretty much uh, my strongest border city, I would say. Um, not not counting Scrying Pool, which is just coastal. But this is actually a land border city. Pindicator is very near here, and he could plausibly send an attack with mounted units that would reach the city in two turns. Starting here, road here, move here, move here, next turn, move here, move here. So that's something I really have to watch out for. And the other thing is he could potentially build a fort here. And while he can't build galleys on this sea because it's too small, it's less than 20 tiles, uh, he could build some other canal type things and get some galleys over here, use the fort, and uh, invade this city navally even, um, p potentially uh, using, therefore, some one movers in boats as well as some two movers. Additionally, we have Dazed over here, and um, here you can see where I raised his capital with an exploring chariot. He might be kind of mad at me because of the capital raising and because of the fact that I've been blockading in his sea over here with triremes. So he may decide to send a sort of revenge attack against me with... He's been building a bunch of chariots and horse archers, I believe, and they might come through here. So this city is also potentially threatened by him. Here we have another island city, and this is the second island city that I founded, um, which immediately gave plus one commerce per every city that I own. So definitely try to get intercontinental trade routes. And it's kind of funny that this island here is considered a different continent for intercontinental trade routes and like is worth so much extra trade income be because apparently just because you're shipping goods across water. Ah, silly sieve. Another island city, this one only boosted uh, my coastal cities because it gave the third intercontinental trade route, which is only applying to cities that um, have the great lighthouse effect, which is coastal cities. And my fourth island city. So basically, as soon as I knew that I was getting the great lighthouse, I very quickly pumped out a couple more settlers to grab my remaining two island cities as fast as possible because I knew they, they, they were going to be like worth about plus 10 commerce each net, which is crazy good, especially considering the fact that they're also going to be cities. Um, and then I did not settle any cities for a very long time, uh, not since the beginning of my golden age, but just last turn I settled Smithy. Um, I've actually produced three settlers in the last few turns, one of them for Smithy here, um, and the reason for Smithy is I want to close down my border here with Pindicator. I want to claim this fish. Um, and it's just a good city. It, it has this great iron tile here. It's on a plains hill. It's coastal, so it gets the full four trade routes. And it has the fish. Um, so very strong city. And um, I mean, it is a filler, and it's not like someone else was going to claim this spot, but it is nice nevertheless to get control of this area. Uh, let's, let's navigate the easy way. Um, this city I just found at this turn, um, and in fact you can still see the little sign here, which I left by accident. Um, I settled two cities towards Yuri this turn, one of them this one, and I'm building culture just so that I can get vision of a couple more tiles in case he 
for some very strange reason, has some units nearby that he decides he wants to attack with. And as you note, I do not have a road connection yet, so I can't really f pull in extra defenders very quickly. Um, so I'm I'm building culture this turn because why not? And be because the workboat was supplied by treasure map, so I can afford to not get started on building a workboat yet. Um, and then the other city is this this one over here, which oddly enough the name is totally covered up. I guess it's Talisman. Um, which is claiming this this gems here. Now, I was really annoyed when Pindicator got the gems over here because the only way to fit a city with this gems into my dot map was to plant it directly on the gems, and his city blocks that completely. Um, if I was willing to not found Smithy here, I could have settled a, a city, for example, one north of the, the, the gems, and I would get cultural control of, of the gems, but it would be an extremely cramped and contested area, and the gems would be right on the border, and I don't think I would really be able to retain full control of them. And really what I want to do is raise this city and plant a city on the gems so that he can't replant Blowfish Avenger. So anyway, having lost that gems, I decided to prioritize getting control of this gems over here. And I put this city here um, for the main reason that um, since it's right next to the gems, I'm definitely going to be in control of them, unlike how I was talking about down by the Pindicator border, where it was possible for me to get control of the gems from him because he didn't settle right next to them. The other advantage of being here is that I can use it as a canal. Um, and right now that's not really that meaningful because I have no way to get boats in into this sea yet. However, I have a fort under construction here. It just needs seven more turns because it's a tundra where it takes nine turns to build a fort. And then I'll be able to get ships into this sea from my main area and uh, from there into here. And to be honest, this probably is not going to matter because I'm probably just going to conquer Yuri by land. That is my plan. Uh, not that I have a particular plan to, to conquer him, but it seems like I'm probably going to do some conquering, and he's probably going to be behind on tech. And probably the fastest way for me to do it is just to send a bunch of uh, cursiers directly at him over land. So probably not going to matter that this is coastal here, but I do get the benefit that I can build a lighthouse here and these two lake tiles are going to become great. And of course I wanted it to be coastal because of the great lighthouse. So those are all my cities. Now I told you about how I'm worried about Dazed attacking me, and let me sh show you the power graphs. Um, Dazed is getting way up there. He's building a lot of units. He's building them slightly faster than me even, and I am being kind of paranoid. I mean, it's it's not like I'm spamming units out of every city. It's more like I'm building units out of one city, to be honest. But uh, I am building some units, unlike the other three. And Dazed is building a lot of units too. Now, we can see quite a number of them. There's vultures all over here. I had vision of a lot of these tiles a few turns ago because I had my galley and trireme like running amok in here and he had vultures on several tiles just guarding workers he had a stack of five chariots and horse archer and a vul vulture here for several turns which I have no idea why maybe he's trying to show me units so that I don't attack him maybe he's trying to show me units to be like if you keep annoying me, I, I, I will come attack you. Perhaps it is a bluff, and he's trying to get me to put defenders over here, and then he's going to run his mounted units down this way and attack Fishing Village. Uh, but that seems kind of crazy, so I'm not really sure what to think. Another option is he's going to tr try to attack, because he's built three galleys here. Now, he had two for a while. Um, and uh, it should be noted that first I started harassing him with only a single galley and a trireme. So maybe he thought that if he built enough galleys that could be repelled a bit. In the meantime, he's researched metal casting. So I expect him to build triremes now, and that is why I, I pulled back actually. I'm hoping that I can sort of diffuse the situation before he builds a lot of triremes and actually it comes to a fight. Because I don't really want to be trading ships with this uh, stupid uh, green guy. 
who's in last place. There's there's no point in trading ships other than getting a little bit of experience, which by the way, I would really like a few more experience points, uh, but not by trading ships because I'm unlikely to get much experience defending in ship battles. You get like one XP for winning a defensive ship battle, so I just need six more XP, then I'll get a great general, then I'll get the heroic epic, and it'll be great. One way I'm thinking of getting s some of those experience points are I have this galley here. It's got a chariot and a spy in inside it right now. And next turn, this worker here from Pindicator is going to finish chopping that jungle. And uh, perhaps it's just going to be the worker and the axe there next turn still. And I can just amphibiously attack with the chariot by moving this galley to here. This is an old sign, by the way. Uh, if the fact that it's referring to a turn that happened seven turns ago didn't tip you off. So, potentially going to try to attack the axe with the chariot, and I believe winning that battle would get me three XP, which is halfway there, so not bad. Um, and I'm also going to drop off the spy, I think, um, and start getting vision of his cities over here. Although, it's possible that I'm going to send the spy this way instead, towards Dazed, just because I'm kind of paranoid about him doing some sort of weird mounted uh, excursion um, coming around the side, but, but not too worried about that. Anyway, I have two spies here. One of them's probably going to go this way, and the other one's going to go towards Pindicator. What else is worth mentioning? Let us look at the other graphs, because I'm pretty far ahead, and uh, you can tell that I'm in a golden age. But even if I wasn't in a golden age, I would be doing better than even Scooter. Scooter. Let's see if he's currently getting gold this turn. He's not getting gold this turn. I think he was getting in the neighborhood of 180 gold a turn. Um, if I turn on max gold, then I am getting 350 a turn, let's say, because you got to count my cast system scientists, too. So 350 a turn, approximately. About 100 of that is from the Golden Age. So if I was not on the Golden Age, I believe I would be get getting in the neighborhood of 230 to 250 gold a turn, um, which is more than Scooter, and he's financial and has the Colossus, which is kind of crazy. So, but in addition to that, I've had seven turns of Golden Age, and I'm going to have 11 more turns of Golden Age. And if Scooter pops a Golden Age, he's only going to have six. So that is another big advantage that I have going for me. Um, very, very big advantage. And it's... I, I haven't got the game in the bag by a long shot, because it's really frickin' hard to defend on this map, because almost all your cities are kind of border cities and could be attacked. Um, and you can't really afford to just put a giant standing army in every border city. So the n the normal defense plan in a Civ game is kind of to uh, have a couple border cities and have them very well defended. And if anyone tr tries to attack them, you will slaughter the attacking army. And uh, oops, um, that that was not a good idea by your opponent. But here. I can't afford to have a force of like four catapults and six horse archers sitting behind every border city. That's just insane. I can afford to have a few city defense units in every border city, but I can't afford to have a strong retaliatory force with um, collateral damage from catapults and lots of units to mop up an attacking stack, um, which, which means that um, moving your units in to enemy territory to probe an enemy city. For example, if I were to move, uh, if, if I were to take two galleys and drop off some units here to see if I can hit Blowfish Avenger, nothing is going to happen to those guys because he can't afford to have a bunch of units that can proactively defend by attacking an invading stack. He can only afford to have city defenders, really. 
So defending on this map is very hard because attacking is kind of easy and you, you can't afford to defend in great strength everywhere. Um, so what I need to worry about right now is a couple of things. I need to worry about Dazed because Dazed is angry and building lots of military units and maybe he's just trying to defend maybe he's overly paranoid that I'm attacking him maybe he thinks I'm like trying to take over his empire but in reality I, I, w I just had a scouting chariot and a scouting trireme that have done him incredible amounts of damage but that's more his fault not not anything related to me in the very near future, I have to worry about days. But very soon, I'm going to have much stronger military units uh, because I'll be getting. Well, I have longbows right now. Those are already strong defenders. I'm going to get muskets, and I'm going to get cuirassiers. And both of those are just going to completely outclass everything he has. And I'm not going to have to worry about him almost at all after that. Additionally, I I, pl I plan to get optics soon, so his potential to build a bunch of triremes and being annoying over here is also um, not very worrisome. But I do have to worry about him right now. The second threat is Scooter. And like I said, Scooter is my most dangerous competitor because he's got Colossus and Financial. And he has the Vikings, which are very strong on this map, and I wish I could have picked the Vikings. Apparently, um, I mean, it seems like I might have been able to pick the Vikings and then get Zara Jakob on the way back, but I wouldn't have counted on that, and I really wanted Zara Jakob. Um, so, what's the threat from Scooter? Well, right now, he has the best military capabilities of anyone in, in the world. What do I mean by that? I mean, he can build Berserkers, and they outclass anything that anyone else can build. Um, Pindicator does not have machinery yet. True, he's about to get it. So he can't build samurai yet. And, uh, yeah, so Scooter's the only one with machinery, which means his units are the king of the hill right now. However, his power rating is very low. Uh, I'm not seeing a big spike after him getting machinery, which was a couple turns ago. So he does not seem to be going on the offensive with them. I am not sure why he researched machinery. He followed it up then with construction. Again, not sure why he researched that. Maybe he's just playing defensive. Perhaps he wants to safeguard against attacks by having the movement across rivers to move between his cities more quickly and to have berserkers and crossbows to guard. I, I, I really don't know. Um, maybe he's planning to whip out an army soon. Um, now, I haven't ended turn yet here, but I've actually al already played this turn. This is just the end of turn save, which I saved right before ending turn. And after I ended turn, I got research visibility back on Scooter, and he was researching philosophy. Now, he doesn't... I don't think he has any beakers in philosophy. I think he just had it queued up behind construction, because he finished construction this past turn, um, if I'm not mistaken. However... That is really confusing. Why would you research machinery and construction and not build any military units and then go on to philosophy? Uh, there's there's just no rhyme or reason there. So at this point, I'm thinking philosophy might be uh, like a ploy. He's not actually going to research it, and he just wants me to think he's going to research it, so I accelerate liberalism or something. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Another possibility is um, he's planning to have a golden age soon and he wants pacifism, but uh, I, I don't know why he'd research machinery and construct... Well, maybe he just wants to build, to build units during the golden age. Who knows? Scooter is my, uh, my, my biggest threat, like I said, but Pindicator is also a, a big threat. And the thing about Pindicator is he's got the pyramids and he's got a specialist economy, which is very good um, in the short term. Um, he'll be able to catch up by thousands of beakers, by getting some great people and bulbing things. And he's already done that to some extent. He bulbed civil service a couple turns ago. Now he's going to get machinery and he'll be able to build samurai. And those are kind of scary for me too, because again, all I have to defend against them is longbows, which I only got that tech a couple turns ago. 
luckily in I don't remember the calculations right now. Maybe about six turns, I'm going to have access to Curisiers, but I'm not going to want to whip yet because I'll st I'll still be in a golden age, so that will still be a problem. And if he decides to whip out a big army and attack either me or to perhaps take some land from Yuri or Dazed, I'm not going to be able to do much about that yet. Um, I will be able to not long after because in 12 turns, I'm going to be done with the whole Golden Age thing, and I'll be uh, really happy to uh, whip things all the way back down to low numbers of population again, and just build a giant military. So in 12 turns, uh, things are going to be looking good militarily for me. But until then, I, I, I have this window of I, d I don't really want to c commit to building a large amount of military yet. My hope is that these other guys see how f far ahead I am and uh, are like, I have to catch up, and the only way to do that is to skimp on military, as opposed to the other conclusion that it's possible to come to, which is I have to catch up, and the only way to do that is to build lots of military. We will see what they do. All right, is there anything else worth mentioning here? Um... I just killed a chariot from Yuri over here. It had ended its turn right here. My spearman was here. Why not? It was uh, two experience on the way to my next great general. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, don't think I have anything else to say about this end of turn stuff. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know in my thread or comments about the video, whether you liked it, whether it was uh, better or worse than just getting some pictures and text, or just text like I've been doing recently. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, that's all.